Foods that are high in sugar spike your blood sugar. That is not something you want if you have insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, or trouble losing weight. So what happens when you remove the sugar? There are sugar-free versions of many high sugar snacks, but do these foods do what you hope they will do? In other words, can you keep eating candy and treats without the troublesome blood sugar spikes? That is what I set out to discover using my continuous glucose monitor from Levels to collect the facts. Every minute of the day, your body is working to maintain a stable blood sugar or blood glucose level. It uses hormones like insulin and glucagon to adjust the level so there is never too much or too little present. Because of these constant adjustments, it is normal to see your blood sugar gently rise and fall throughout the day. And depending on what you eat or certain lifestyle factors, even a healthy individual will experience occasional blood sugar spikes. Your body easily handles occasional spikes, but if you consistently spike your blood sugar level with high sugar foods, your body must produce large amounts of insulin to deal with it. Over time, this can cause insulin resistance, which is a condition in which your cells stop responding to insulin properly. Because insulin is the hormone that moves energy-rich glucose into your cells, this resistance leaves you feeling low on energy, hungry, and at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Therefore, when your goal is to control your weight or blood sugar, you want to eat foods that do not cause blood sugar spikes. That's an easy concept to grasp, but when it comes to playing it out in this sugar-filled world of ours, there are obvious challenges. One of the most glaring is that sugar is the main ingredient in a lot of fun foods like cookies, cakes, and candies. There are solutions that pique our hope, namely sugar-free candies and packaged snacks, but do they deliver on their promise? Can we keep enjoying these treats without worrying about the consequences of blood sugar spikes? You can't know for sure unless you monitor your blood sugar level. Since Levels makes it so easy for me to test my blood sugar over time, it gives me an effortless way to see how snacks that are promoted as sugar-free affect my metabolism. Levels is sponsoring this video. The company makes it possible for people without diabetes to get this preventative tool called a CGM or continuous glucose monitor. You attach this small device to your skin, typically on your arm or belly, and it measures the fluid around your cells to gauge your blood glucose level. The Levels app then gives you continual updates with only a few minutes delay. I do not have diabetes, but I am able to utilize Levels in return for them using my anonymous CGM data as part of their research study on glucose patterns in people without diabetes. This offer is extended to you as well, but you don't have to participate in the study. If you prefer not to, Levels will connect you with an asynchronous physician's consultation to see if you qualify for a prescription. Levels does not profit from the sale of the CGMs, but they do make it possible for you to get the monitors. They only make money from their membership fee. If you are interested in monitoring your blood sugar, signing up for a Levels membership and buying a month's supply of CGMs gives you a full month to see how foods you eat affect you. There's no commitment to continuing past that month. You can cancel any time or control your cost by controlling how often you receive CGMs. You don't have to wear one every month. And if you use my link, levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky to sign up, you'll get an additional two free months of the membership. The sugar-free items I chose to test were sugar-free pecan delights and sugar-free keto taffy. I tested each snack at seven o'clock in the morning because I was in a fasted state, so there were no other foods in my system to skew my results. Testing at this time also eliminated confounding variables like exercise. I did drink black coffee on both testing days because I was willing to bite the bullet and eat chocolate candy in the morning, but was not willing to give up my coffee. To be considered blood sugar friendly, I want to see two things after consuming the snacks. First, I want to see a minimal blood sugar spike immediately after eating it. Second, I want a stable and gentle blood sugar rise and fall in the two hours after consumption. The intensity of that first spike shows me how the food is affecting me. The degree of rise and fall over time shows me how my body is handling the food. So let's take a look at our first sugar-free snack. On the first day of testing, I ate one serving of sugar-free pecan delights. 
When I turned the package over, I saw that there were zero grams of added sugar. However, there are 14 grams of sugar alcohol. Sugar alcohols are a favorite ingredient for food manufacturers to add because they are sweet, but don't have to be counted as added sugar. And they are poorly digested and absorbed, so they can be more or less dismissed in the overall carbohydrate content of the food. This is where net carbs come into play. Net carbs are a calculation based on the fact that some carbohydrates like fiber and sugar alcohols cannot be digested and absorbed by the body or they are poorly absorbed. Because of that, food companies are allowed to subtract these low impact carbs from total carbs, leaving us with net carbs. For this candy, we see that there are 17 total grams of carbohydrates per serving with one of the grams coming from fiber and 14 being sugar alcohol grams. This food was not marketed to the keto diet crowd, but if it were, you would see the food label boast of having just two net carbs per serving. But here's the tricky part. Not all sugar alcohols are created equal. Some can be absorbed through the small intestine and cause a rise in blood glucose. Maltitol is one of those tricky sugar alcohols. According to Healthline, maltitol has a glycemic index of 35. Now that is lower than table sugar, which has a glycemic index of 65. However, if you recall, the glycemic index is the measure of how quickly a food raises your blood sugar level. Because maltitol has a glycemic index, that means it is getting into your bloodstream and causing a rise in your blood sugar. That's exactly what these subtracted carbohydrates are not supposed to do. This sugar-free candy has maltitol listed three times in the ingredient list, one of which is maltitol syrup, which we will discuss in a moment. But for now, if you're already seeing some red flags concerning this candy, you're justified in that thinking. But there's no way of knowing until we run the test. So let's get to that. On day one of testing, I got up at 6 a.m., had a cup of coffee with my husband, and then ate two sugar-free pecan delights at 7 a.m. In case you were wondering, they were delicious, but I will add to that story in a couple of minutes. The big advantage of levels is that you get continual analysis of your blood sugar without a need for a series of finger pricks. So it's very easy to see how food affects you. I simply snapped a picture of the candies and the snack was added to my timeline. I then went on with my typical morning routine as the Levels app tracked my blood glucose. After two hours, I saw that the candy caused a blood glucose rise of 35 milligrams per deciliter, earning a level score of four out of 10, with 10 being the best score. So this was not the worst, but it was a below average score. To give you an idea, the levels team's optimal goal for a blood sugar rise after eating is less than 30 milligrams per deciliter. This candy caused a 35 point increase in me. And keep in mind that I haven't always been, but I am now an insulin sensitive person, meaning my cells were willing to receive the excess blood sugar that ended up in my blood after eating this snack. If you have insulin resistance or diabetes, your rise may be higher or stay higher longer. So while my results offer a good example, it's always best to monitor your own response. so You can really dial in your food choices that help you to maintain that stable blood sugar level that you are wanting throughout the day. Low carb and keto dieters are also interested in eating for blood sugar stability because that leads to low insulin levels that encourage fat loss. Here we have a sugar-free candy with the added bonus of being keto friendly, at least according to the label. On the front of the package, we see that there are zero sugar grams and zero net carb grams. When we turn the package over, we learn how these zero gram claims are possible. The 20 grams of carbohydrates per serving were wiped away by the 20 grams of sugar alcohol. But there's more. The main ingredient in this keto taffy is maltitol syrup. That's different than plain maltitol. Remember that I said maltitol has a glycemic index of 35? Maltitol syrup has a glycemic index of 52. To put that into perspective, the glycemic index of table sugar is 65. That means that the blood sugar impact of maltitol syrup is very close to that of sugar, yet because it is classified as a sugar alcohol, it does not need to be counted as sugar or a carb. 
Also remember that I said the pecan delights were yummy. They were. The pieces of taffy were not my thing. They were super sweet. The sweetness of both snacks came in large part from sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols are known to cause stomach upset and bloating. That is no joke. I was not feeling good on my testing days and the symptoms did not show up until hours after I ate the candies. I was very thankful that I only had to eat one serving of them. So keep that in the back of your mind when you are deciding if a sugar-free snack is worth trying. So put your guesses in now. If the sugar-free chocolate candy raised my blood sugar by 35 points, will this keto taffy have more or less of an impact? When I tested the next morning, I saw an immediate effect with a glucose increase of 40 milligrams per deciliter over the two hour period after eating it. That is again, not the worst, but not what you want if you are looking to improve blood sugar control or lose weight with your keto diet. Like the sugar-free chocolate candy, the Keto Taffy earned a level score of four. With just a couple of taps of the app, you can see how both snacks caused a blood sugar rise despite having no added sugar. Was a rise as high as we would have seen with a full sugar version of these snacks? Probably not, but the takeaway here is that if a package label says that it is sugar-free, that does not mean it's carefree. I understand the frustration that is felt when you try to make positive changes only to be met with unexpected obstacles like this. The only way to be certain that your food choices are having the effect you expect is to monitor your blood sugar. There are several ways you can do this. You can pick up a blood glucose monitor at your local pharmacy and test your blood with a finger prick. You can ask your doctor to prescribe a CGM or you can join levels and get CGMs sent to you with or without a prescription. If you'd like to get levels for yourself, you can do so online. Your first purchase will include a one month supply of continuous glucose monitors and a 12 month software membership. And again, if you go to levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky, Levels is offering an additional two free months of their annual membership. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.